As a kid, I was a huge fan of the cartoon Thundercats. Do you remember the intro? Now, when I got out of school, I had about an hour before the show started, so I needed to make sure, played with my friends, went back home, got there on time to watch the show. Sometimes I was able to get the VCR to record the show correctly. You put in your tape, and then it'll like, play music, right? Yeah, these kids today, they have it so easy with their streaming services, watching shows whenever they want. I'm beginning to sound like an old man. Goodness gracious. You know what? What? Back in my day, I had to walk 200 miles to the store, barefoot, on one leg. Wait, what was wrong with your other leg? Well, my other leg was fighting off 10,000 Mongolian soldiers. Yes, and back in the day, I used to create reports and dashboards manually, but I'd like to introduce you to a tool where you don't have to do that anymore. Over the last couple months, I've been engaged with a tool called Auto Insights, which is an add-in for the AlterX platform. In fact, when I was at the Inspire conference, I was able to do an interview with some of the folks from Auto Insights. I even posted a video of that on the channel, so make sure you check it out. Now, I'm gonna walk you through a very quick, I'll say the world's fastest demo of the Auto Insights platform. Hopefully I do it justice. And we're gonna do this two ways. One is with a CSV file and another one we'll dive into the AlterX Designer platform and, uh, and load the data that way. Now, if you're watching this video because you're interested in the Auto Insights uploader tool or you have questions about it or you're having issues, go ahead and use the chapter navigation to head over to that portion of the video now. Got some really great hints and tips for you there. So let's dive in. I've got a raw data set that I'm gonna, gonna use here. I've actually just kind of hacked this up. I went out to the Nielsen's rating site and uh, basically copy and pasted the data off that site that we can use. So I've got weekly rankings of original streaming programs. So for Netflix, Prime Video, Amazon, uh, Disney Plus, and so on are in here. The name of the program, the platform, minutes viewed, uh, audience genre, and then um, the week in which the rankings occurred. Now the Auto Insights platform needs three things bare minimum. I've gotta have a, a segment in here, so uh, a category basically, which I've got plenty of those. I need at least one numeric field, so that's gonna be my minutes viewed. And then I need a date, a time frame that I'm gonna pull in, and so I've got that weekly information. Uh, won't load any of the data if I don't have those three prerequisites. Auto Insights is very good at showing time series data and comparing time periods, so that's why I need this uh, date component in there. So that's the data we're going to be working with. Now let's go ahead and navigate over to the Auto Insights platform. So I've loaded it up and I'm logged in just with some sample data that I've got up on the, on the screen. We're going to go and bring in a new data set. So I'm gonna go over to data sets and I have to be in the admin portal to do that. So we'll create a new data set, launch a new page in the admin portal go to data sets and create a new data set. Now there's a couple other requirements here. The columns can't begin with names and special characters. They can't contain more than five words, no longer than 256 characters. Uh, also measures have to just be raw numbers. They cannot have any symbols in them, like a percent sign, a pound symbol, or a slash. The segments, the categories themselves, cannot contain unstructured, free-flowing open text data. All right, so none of that exists in my data set, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna call this um, streaming views, and we'll go ahead and continue. Now, you do have the option of connecting to a database. You can whitelist the IP address coming in from Auto Insights. So I do recommend, obviously, if you're gonna automate this, having your Alterx designer workflow write the data out to a database table and then have Auto Insights read it from there. Obviously that makes sense. For the demo, we're just gonna upload a CSV file. This works really well if you do just have a one-time data set that you wanna analyze, perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the data in. We're gonna get a quick preview here. It does look like the data set I just showed you. I'm just gonna confirm that the date's loaded properly 
with the four position year, two position month and day. Looks good. All right, we'll go ahead and analyze the data and then pop back once it's done analyzing. All right, so this first analysis step is really just looking at the data that I imported and determining the dates, the segments, and the measures. And you'll see that it found that the rank is indeed a, a measure. Uh, and it's asking me a very important question. Is it good when this particular measure increases or decreases? There are times when you have a measure where it's good when it decreases. In healthcare, this happens frequently. Uh, in this case, I don't want the rank field though, so we're gonna disable that column. I do want the program, it is a category um, for now, it's a segment. Uh, platform is also a segment with Netflix and, and Disney Plus. For the minutes viewed, it did rename it with an underscore. That's not what's gonna show up when we see it inside Auto Insights. This is just the name that's behind the scenes here, but it will put underscores in the white space. This is not a segment, however. It's a measure, so we'll go ahead and change it to a measure. It is good when it increases and we'll leave it active. A number of episodes I don't want, um, and the audience uh, I'm going to turn off also, and the style, we'll just take the genre for now. And uh, the week is a date. It asked me, again, another important question, when does the fiscal year start? In this case, we're going to say it's February because I pulled basically six months of data, and it no recognizes it's weekly. Uh, which is exactly right. I, I pulled in uh, weekly data in this data set, but I could change it to monthly or anything uh, up that hierarchy. Okay, everything looks good. So we'll go ahead and upload it real quickly and then come back when it's done. Now there's a couple things I want to change before we go and actually look at the data. So we're going to go to set key measures. And in this data set, it's already creating for me some metrics that I can look at. Now, I'm really not interested in the count of genres and, and platforms and programs. So we're going to check those and we're going to move them over to the right to hide them. I also only want to look at the average minutes viewed uh, maybe per platform. I'm not really interested in the average per program. That doesn't make sense in a ranked list. Uh, so we'll leave these three shown in the, these other four hidden. Uh, I can also go and look at the segments. So does it make sense when I look at the minutes viewed to see the minutes viewed by genre, platform, and program? Yep, that's that makes sense to me. Uh, and then I can change the week start, which in this case happens on a Monday. So we're good there. I could also create custom measures. If there's ratios I wanted to create in this data set, I could do that. I could also define goals. Okay, these are really helpful features. I'm not gonna show them right now, but it's nice to know that those are there. So let's go to the first sort of step after we've loaded the data, which is the discover piece. Now remember, I said these are insights. I don't like calling this reports and dashboards. I didn't create any of this. It did it automatically. This is a chance for me to see sort of what it's found. I can now see week to week. So the current week that I'm in is actually the 4th of July, looking back the previous seven days, from the 27th of June to the 3rd of July, and see that there was actually a decrease in the views, almost 17% decrease, and then go down and see, you know, what it, what is it that happened that caused this? This will be sort of obvious to people that know what, what particularly happened the end of June, early July, and that's that Stranger Things was released the week before this, the second part. My kids watched a lot of Stranger Things. And it the viewership declined the following week, which sort of makes sense. It was on the Netflix platform, and it's defined as a genre. A, uh, the genre is defined as drama in my data set. So there was a decrease in the Netflix viewership from week to week, but there was actually a new program added. Anything that shows up with plus 100% is it was added, minus 100% would have been uh, removed from the list. I think you can get a further breakout just by the program. So like Snowflake Mountain and, and the bear fell off, but Lincoln Lawyer and Miss Marvel came onto the list. So immediately it's finding things that are useful for me. I can go back and I can look at previous time periods. So I can look at the previous week. This was the week Netflix was released. So there was a huge 43% increase, right? Makes total sense there. I can even go back further time periods because I know that something happened in May, 
for me where uh, I actually had a missing data set, um, a missing week within my data set. Um, and you'll see it figured out that week remained stable. It was actually from week to week, it was the exact same week. I was missing the week, so I had to copy the, the previous week. I just wanted to show that it, it very quickly found that out within the data set as it analyzed it. Now, let's say that I'm very happy with what I've discovered. I want to do further breakdowns into the platforms itself and the genre. So let's go ahead and create something called a mission. And this, you can sort of think of it as what would be a, a dashboard, I guess, if you wanted to in a report. It's really what it's, what it's replicating, but it's doing this stuff automatically for you. So we're gonna add the minutes viewed and the average minutes per genre and platform. Uh, and here it creates views for us here where I can see the long-term trend, what happened week versus week. Uh, and it's created several pages for me. Uh, one of the breakdowns is by minutes viewed, and it showed me some of the key changes from the previous week. We know it dropped quite a bit, and I can look at what most likely caused it. We know that based on what we saw in Discovery that it was uh, the Stranger Things release and then the subsequent drop off week to week. I can quickly navigate between time periods too and see these changes in, in time, which is very nice. Now, let's say that I wanted to focus in on one platform and I'm gonna go in and edit the view that I'm in or the mission that I'm in, and I'm gonna add a filter to say that I really only wanna look at Netflix, okay? And we'll go ahead and we'll apply that. And now I've gotten rid of Amazon and, and Disney and I'm just looking at Netflix, and I can see what has happened just with those shows. So D.B. Cooper, Where Are You? and Resident Evil came on, The Upshaws and Lincoln Lawyer fell off. I could even go and get a further breakdown by the genres, which ones are doing well. Comedy, documentary, and horror came on. Uh, comedy completely fell off. Uh, and crime and drama have been declining. I could even duplicate this. So I could go and duplicate it and say, now I want to create one that's really not just Netflix. Maybe it's everyone else except Netflix. <laughs> and see what that looks like, right? How are they comparing? Uh, the terminal list decreased, must have came out the week before maybe, was doing well. You can see each program, Ms. Marvel happened to be doing a little bit better, change in counts there as well. I could even get a breakdown, so I could dive into this further and say, let me see what it looks like by genre. So the action genre had the fastest decline while comedy increased, and I can easily see what these increases are. There's even some statistical principles built into this, like the 80-20 rule uh, could be in here as well as part of what it what it builds. Now, let's say I'm really happy with the way that this mission looks, and I want to send this out each week so somebody could say, how's Netflix doing versus all the other platforms? Every week, I go to subscribe, create a new subscription, uh, enter the users that should be receiving this subscription, and they'll get it in their inbox, and the layout mimics this page very well, which is one of my, one of my pet peeves with Power BI is that the dashboard layout screen in the email doesn't look great and it requires people to go into the platform to view it. They can still do that from the subscription for Auto Insights, but it's a much cleaner view of the data if all they're doing is receiving insights. That's it. So that's a quick overview, world's fastest one, I think. <laughs> and again, I hope I did it justice of the CSV portion of it. Now let's take a look at how this is viewed inside Alteryx Designer. So I've got a very simple uh, layout here where I'm pulling in that CSV file. There are some prerequisites that you need to have. First, we have to turn on the Data Connection Manager. So we go to Options, Users, Edit User Settings, DCM tab, and then override the DCM settings, enable DCM, and choose Allow SDK Access Mode. Save that, and then you should see the uh, set up a connection button if it's enabled. All right, I'm going through my standard pattern, uh, auto field, and then converting the date to the correct format, uh, and then sending that to Auto Insights. Now, there is another thing you gotta do with the Auto Insights uploader tool. It's in the in out palette. Uh, make sure it is the one that has the data connection manager and button listed here. If it's not, you'll have to download it from the gallery. Now, it comes with the latest version of Alteryx Designer. This is 2022.1, uh, but I still had to download the one from the gallery. Not sure why that is, but I, but I had to. So when you go to set up the connection, 
you'll need to create credentials first. So go to the credentials tab, add new credentials, give it a name. I was going to put name in there and go and choose auto insights API token and you'll put in your access key and your secret to find those. When you're inside Auto Insights, you're just gonna go to your account settings and click on API tokens and it'll list them for you. Okay, pa paste them in and then click save. So that will create your credentials. Then you'll need to go to data source and you'll add a new data source. You'll give it a name and then you'll just choose the environment for me I'm in the United States. So it's us.insights.alteryxcloud.com and then you'll save those uh, that data source. Once the data source is saved, you'll have to click on it and then connect to a credential. So you'll choose the API token, leave that as the method, and then choose the credential you created in the previous step. And once that's created, you'll need to click connect to verify that it's actually connected. Then you can go and give the data set a name We'll call this um, new since I've already named it that. That's, I know that's horrible, but I'm doing it. And then um, what you're gonna do if there's missing or added columns to the data set, whether you wanna continue uploading or stop uploading. And then from there, you're just gonna run the workflow and uh, it'll upload the data to Auto Insights and let you know when it's complete. It'll give you some steps here inside the results pane to tell you how it's going. Okay, that's, again, the world's fastest overview. All of this had me thinking to tie it back into Thundercats about the sword of omens that lion -O used. Do you remember that sword? There's no way of knowing. There is a way. Sword of omens, give me sight beyond sight. Yes, I want auto insights to give me sight beyond sight. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I will catch you on the next one.